Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Wildly Passionate, and today we're going to be doing a book review. I figured since it is October, which is also known as Inktober, if you are an artist and you're on social media, you probably already know that. And basically Inktober is all about using more ink in your artwork. Um, you don't have to use ink exclusively, some people do. It's sort of an exercise in uh, testing your limits with a particular medium. So before I get into the book that I'm going to review, I need to tell you guys a, a big secret, this big secret I have. And that is that I am not very good at inking. I am insecure about it, I'm uncomfortable with it, and I don't always feel like I really understand why people ink things certain ways, but I do love the way inked artwork looks. Um, even if it's like technical pen illustrations, I'm just flabbergasted with the amount of detail and the amount of work that goes into these pieces. They're very labor intensive. It's a medium I am very impressed by, but also intimidated by. So that brings me to this book that I got maybe like a year ago as a present. It's called The Art of Comic Book Inking by Gary Martin with Steve Rude. And then there are also all these other people who contributed to the book, um, who are artists in generally in the comic book industry, who um, in the back have provided little interviews and examples of how they would all ink the same penciled page. So having all those artists' opinions in the back of the book is one of my favorite parts of the book, actually, that makes it, I think, really valuable. You don't just get the perspective of the one author and how he would ink something. You get a sense of multiple artists in the industry and how they would all approach the same piece of art and how they would specifically work on the inking portion of it and how they might differ from each other. And there's not really a judgment saying one is better than the other, but you get a good idea of just a variety of techniques that you can use to achieve similar results, but maybe through different methods, different tools, that kind of thing. Okay, so this book is split up into, I would say, three basic sections. First you have all of your tutorial sections. And I'm not going to show a bunch of pages from the book just because it is, you know, copyright and stuff. But the first section is um, specific techniques like how you use line weight to express certain things, how you spot blacks, feathering, crosshatching, style, um, how to ink faces, and then specific things like trees, bushes, um, I think like water and smoke and fire, specific things that you generally need to ink often and how you can approach that. So the second section of the book is The Secrets of the Stars, and that is the section, like I mentioned earlier, where they go over the same pencil drawing, and you have a couple different artists, four or five or six, you have each variation of how they would ink that particular drawing. And then your final section of the book is the eight pencil drawings included on really nice paper, it's nice to work on, or you can use tracing paper and um, have as many copies as you want. And so like I said, there are eight of those and they're all varying uh, amounts of detail and different styles that you can try out, which I think is really great as well. But one of my favorite sections is the materials section, and I'm still trying to learn what materials I actually like to use, what um, materials are more challenging. So you'll see them talk a lot about using a brush for inking and a crow quill pen or a dip pen, which is what I call them. So this book really gets you out of your comfort zone if you have certain, if you, like, let's say you're experienced with inking but you have certain um, crutches or a certain way of doing things that you're really, really stuck with. This will kind of push you out of your regular uh, boundaries. So one of the best things about this book, I think, is how they address really specific problems you encounter with inking. Um, so they discuss specifically inking a face and the human figure and how that is different from how you might ink, let's say, a building, an architectural building that, you know, has mechanical, hard, you know, industrial edges. And it really enforces using just ink to describe a light source. So this book does not co cover 
color or shading in the sense of how you might shade something with a pencil or charcoal. For shading with ink, generally you have to do some sort of hatching or cross-hatching, and so they cover all different types. I didn't even know there were this many types of cross-hatching, or well this is just hatching, uh, to shade and come up with all these different effects that I really had never thought of. You know, I take I take a pen and you play around with it and you know, I'm like, okay, I can, you know, I can hatch this way and I can hatch that way and I can kind of curve around the form and pretty much that was about it that I could come up with. Um, but it never really occurred to me that I could do these like transitions from pure black to lighter just by changing the amount of pressure that I use with a pen. So, um, and a lot of times you can't get that with certain tools. You have to be able to use a brush or a dip pen and be able to be so precise with your line that you can get it from a thick line to a thin line and over and over. I mean, this takes a lot of practice. And actually in this book I learned about things like cursive lines that I had never even learned. And I went to art school and we, we did, um, I had two classes where we mostly only used ink and they never taught me that. And I had such trouble with that class because I'm like, I can't get the same effects that I can get with a pencil or charcoal. So if you've ever, if, if you've started out your career with pencil and you love to draw and you, and you like to shade, this book I think is the great next step for moving that into inking for illustrations and comic books um, or some sort of re reproduction process where it needs to be photocopied into something as simple as black and white. So I love the chapters in this book where they cover faces and facial features because that's my favorite thing to draw. Um, but they go into detail about like the night sky and uh, how stars might look, how you might use whiteout and other um, sort of, I guess that might be considered like negative drawing with white into the black. And the examples are absolutely fantastic in this book. It is not lacking for examples. So if you're a visual learner, this book is great. It's not heavy on the text. It's really well balanced. So I, I thought it was great. And there's also a section on cartoon inking, which, you know, comic book inking and cartoon inking, you might think it's really similar, but actually they have specific properties that make them different. And the book actually even has a little section on like what the differences are. So here's the panel that I inked so far. Um, as I was inking it, I was I was realizing like, oh, I don't really know how to approach this part or that part. Uh, even though I read through the whole book, uh, it's a lot of information. So I find myself referring back to it often. It's not one of those books that you read once and you don't touch again. It's really a reference book that you're going to be using again and again in your art. So the great thing about this book for me was that when I hit a section where I was like, oh, you know, how do I, there's all these like black sections here, how do I separate the black shapes? I could go then into the book in the section where they cover how the professional artist drew that particular page. I could go there and then compare my drawing to um, what exactly the artist did and I could be like oh, okay they leave a little white line now I know how to deal with that in the future so for me my type of learning which is 100% visual and by do I learn by doing this book is really great and I think the fact that they include these pages of art that you can practice on is absolutely invaluable now you can't really use these pieces of art in your portfolio as something you own the rights to because it's from, you know, it's from a book, somebody else owns it and you don't have explicit permission from them, but it's a great way to practice, so um, I'm going to take full advantage of that and just keep practicing this month uh, more with ink, and I'm going to try and be brave and use a brush more often and a dip pen and see if I can learn how to control those very delicate mediums a little bit better in the future. Alright, so this book is by Dark Horse Books and I got it for about $30. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll do the best I can to answer them. But for now, take care and stay passionate.